fire part two. Looks like Mike's gonna actually fire this cannon. Hey, you really gonna fire that cannon? <laughs> and who are we? Who are we under attack today that we're firing that cannon? <laughs> go. And what are we putting in there? Gunpowder. <laughs> Actually, we're not allowed to have real gunpowder on board. The Coast Guard lets us use this synthetic gunpowder called Pirate yeah. Safer, I guess. It's a little bit less volatile than, uh, than gunpowder, than black powder. Cool, there it goes. It's getting tucked in deep, just to be sure. Extra precautionary measures there. So folks, I've loaded the cannon, and I'd like to explain to you briefly why I would load a cannon, except just for the sheer joy of it. But the story behind this boat, which some of you may not be aware of, is that the original fame was a privateer in the War of 1812. This is actually, this kind of boat is what they call the tobacco schooner, and they built boats like this really all over New England. It wasn't a particularly interesting boat. There were hundreds of them, and they used them for cod fishing, they used them for trading up and down the coast. But this particular boat, the fame, was built right before the War of 1812 broke out, at a time in which everyone who lived in this particular area was very worried about what the war was going to turn out for them, how the war would turn out for them economically. Because they had been at war with Great Britain all through the Revolution, the war had lasted eight years, and it had been a very difficult time. Uh, yes, we won our independence, but it would it trash the local economy. And once again, a war with Great Britain meant that all the people who were involved with the maritime trade here in Salem, those folks were all going to be out of work for the duration of the war. And they were worried about that. So what they did was a bunch of young captains got together, pooled their money, and bought the system and turned it into a privateer, which is like a legalized form of piracy where when a war broke out, anyone could go to the government and apply for this piece of paper, a privateering commission, and that allowed you to go out and behave a lot like a pirate to chase and capture vessels. But the thing that made it legal was you could only chase and capture vessels that you could prove were enemy vessels. So for example, as a, a pirate would fire, it would, it would capture a boat and um, would plunder right then and there, obviously. But a private he was obligated to put a prize crew on board, sail it back to a friendly port, and go before a judge. Once you could prove, though, that the ship you captured was an enemy vessel and that you were a legal privateer, you got to auction off the ship and the cargo and you got to keep almost all the money. So not only was it legal, it was very lucrative at a time when all cargoes moved by sea. So, obviously as a privateer, you can't just run up to people and tag them and say you're in. Sorry, I'm just peeking to see where we are. You need to have cannons. Uh, and as someone asked earlier, yes, the paint had larger cannon than this. She actually had a six-pounder cannon. That cannon is about five foot long and basically fires a tennis ball. But that cannon on its carriage also weighs about a thousand pounds. So the Coast Guard doesn't think that's a great thing for us to have. What we do have are these little swivel guns though. And these are great for explaining how piracy and privateering actually work for people. Have you got this boat up your bow? Okay, I don't think they've got you. Snoozing. You've got plenty of water to go straight ahead. All the way down. Lots of water. Just watch out for the kayak. Ah, <laughs> uh, good. Yes, he says, oh gosh, I'm about to be run over by a giant schooner. <laughs> so, sorry, getting back to piracy and privateering. The goal was to capture vessels intact, if at all possible, right? I mean, pirates had to live off the vessels they captured, because we were a notorious pirate. You cannot go to Walmart. <laughs> they, they know who you are, your picture is up at the front door. You know, they say, oh, have you seen this man? And as a privateer, like I said, when you captured a vessel, you were obligated to sail it back to a friendly port and go before a judge. Well, good luck doing that after you've shot that ship up. So the goal for pirates and privateers was not like they do in the Pirates of the Caribbean to sail around blasting people with full broadsides. The goal, a better vessel than the Black Pearl, is actually a little similar like the Fame, full of aggressive guys who are going to jump overboard, who are brave, um, and to use little guns like this. 
not to fire individual cannonballs, but like giant shotguns. So they might have three or four guns like this lined up on each side of the vessel, and they would put about three times as much gunpowder as I just put in, and then out to the muzzle with sand or broken glass or birdshot, and so they're big shotguns. And as the vessels come together, because what you want to do is board, you want to physically climb on board that other vessel. As the vessels come together, you fire off these, those guys duck, that's your opportunity to climb over onto the other vessel. So this is actually much more appropriate to the period and to piracy and privateering than the stuff you see in the Johnny Depp movies. How they go, they show this ship, which I think maybe there's 15 guys like on the boat, and then all of a sudden they're firing full broadsides from 24 pound cannon, each of which would take nine guys to fire. Yeah, <laughs> not very realistic. Hollywood. So, realism be damned, we're gonna fire the gun. Um, if you're not used to it, it's actually louder than you think it's going to be. Yeah. So you may want to plug your ears. If I get be the loud. fuse lit, I'll say fire in the hole, and that's your opportunity to either plug your ears or turn on the video function on your camera. You want a movement. And you guys should just shove back just a little bit. You don't want to be too close to the gun. Yeah. Just in case it blows up. <laughs> when I like this thing, I'm headed that way. I'm, I'm going south. All right, are we ready? Yeah. All right. Fire in the hole. Woo! Wow. Now imagine that with three times as much powder. Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't want to get in front of that. Very, very effective weapon. Yeah. Yeah.